research on this, this is often called the three V's of communication. You may have seen this before, that will again attest, Narelle said that our message is as highly visual. Absolutely it is. When we communicate, the message received, our audience will put about a 7% weighting on the words that we use. That's the first V, the verbal. A huge impact of the message or the determination of your message is on your voice, your tone of voice. Now you think for a moment when Narelle just did that exercise with us and half of us was facing in the room, the only communication you had at that time was Narelle's voice. How engaged did you stay? How engaged did you stay when you just had the verbal? The voice has a huge impact, but a much bigger impact is the visual. In your first three minutes, you checked out how I was standing, what I was wearing, what it said about me, and whether you were going to take anything that I had to say in. Did you not? Absolutely. Do you like this skirt? <laughs> I thought it was so cute when I saw it last week. Yeah, so I had to get that. <laughs> so, it's true. And, and ladies, just a tip, I know you are going to get some uh, advice on, on dressing. If ever you are doing a stage performance, just one tip, don't ever wear a white shirt. Can you imagine, women, what happens for some women wearing a white shirt? I've seen women in a business context do that. It's a big tip, don't do it. <laughs> and the other thing, if you've got a lapel mic, make sure you've got something you can hang it onto. I've been caught with that one as well. Now I wear skirts, because if you wear a dress, you've got a problem. <laughs> So a little tip. So the visual. The last thing is the visual determination of the message that people receive is largely based on our facial expression. So if ever you want an expert in that area, look at some of Alan Pease's books. Have you look, read some of Alan Pease? Yeah, I'm seeing some nodding around. If you ever get a chance, he occasionally comes to Perth. He's fantastic. He's an expert, masterful in body language to read it. I'll, I'll give you an accelerated tip. I've seen, seen Alan speak a number of times. The three tips are smile. Universally, it communicates warmth, connection. Use it. Smile eye contact. You'll notice that I'm looking at people, we're going to talk more about that, eye contact when you are presenting. And the third, and this one people go, oh it's a bit hard, open gestures. As opposed to, I see some women present like this. What sort of impression does that create? And it's weak, would you agree? It, 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 up here, the little dainty hands. So as much as you can to present with open gestures and it does take some practice. A girl I worked with the other day and we were talking about that and she went back to work in the coffee area and she said, Margot, I was practicing just standing like this because it does feel a bit awkward but just develop that ability to do it. All right? So they're the key things to think about in terms of what you're communicating. It's, it's the, the voice, it's visually what you're communicating and the words are important and I'm not going to focus on the words for today, I'm going to focus on the other two and to just give you some tips with that. So to take it further, when you have an opportunity to communicate and present, sometimes it's one on one, one on a few or one on many like this. I'd like to suggest to you that there's enormous potential for you to have influence and impact. And you just think again what Narelle mentioned about Facebook, YouTube, uh, what's the other one, LinkedIn that we're all in, having a, a presence of some sort. There's enormous potential for you to have an influence and impact in this world. Would you agree? How well do you capitalise on your potential when you present? So I'd like to suggest that your performance when you present your ideas is actually a function of the interferences. What are some ways that you can positively interfere with your potential? What are some of them? You could do some training. You could invest some time preparing your presentation because there's some of us that love to prepare. Are there some that, you know, it's, I'm a just-in-time present, preparer, uh, presenter? Yeah. And how does that affect how well you perform? Yeah. What are some other things that you could do to improve your performance? 
seeking opportunity, there is no shortcut to practice. Did we ever learn to ride a bike without getting out there and scraping a few knees? You've got to do a few lousy presentations. You've just got to go out, even though you're not ready, go out and, and have a go. That will make a difference. What can negatively impact your potential? Not having a go. Not preparing. Not doing your research. Doing the canned presentation, that can, make a, that can impact the performance. And I'm going to talk to you too about some of the mental chatter. What's your story around who you are as a presenter? What state of mind do you create before you present? Yeah. So I'm going to give you some time on your tables now to actually think about that. I'd like you to have a chat to your buddies about your performance as a presenter in the context that you work in. Are you presenting at a meeting where you sit down? So you need a seat at the table? Or are you presenting, uh, doing things like, like this, standing up? Or you might be speaking at a conference. What are some of the things that you do do or you could do more of that would increase your performance? And what do you know are some of the things that takes away from your potential, limits you in some way? Where you go. Going to give you another minute on your tables to do that. Can I bring that back? How'd you go? Would you agree there's lots of opportunity to increase your performance and tap into your potential? Excellent. Well, what I'd like to do now is to give you five ways, as I said before, that you can go away from here and implement immediately next time you have the opportunity to perform the way you present your ideas and to have greater influence and impact. So the first tip to you, for you is what sort of state of mind do you create as you're about to present? What goes on between here for you? What's the story you tell yourself and other people? I'll tell you the story I hear mostly. Oh, I'm really nervous. I'm really, really nervous about this. I'm really, I'm, I'm not a good presenter. I am not. No, definitely not. Oh, they all know a lot more about it than I do. Oh, I'm the junior. And they're more senior to me. That's the other story I get. Or the other is, oh, they're all younger and I can't relate to them. That's commonly the story. And I just go, how resourceful does that make you if you carry on this story about who you are and using thinking that just brings you down. Let me give you a very sharp illustration of this. Think for a moment, you're all going to love this, I'm not going to ask for your best romantic moment because I'm sure you could easily go there, but what's a magic holiday moment you've had? Just think of one in your brain right now. Oh, you're all off there. I'm going to Phuket in October. <laughs> That's where I'm going. Think of a magic holiday moment. Now, when you take yourself there, I can see it on your faces already. How are you feeling? Yeah? Now, you're not there. You're not on your holiday, are you? No. But I just shifted your thinking straight away that physiologically changed you. You can do that for yourself. Think of a really great song. There's a lady I work with, she's in the mining department and she, in, in a resource company, I should say, and she's in the HR. And she has to do performance reviews with these great big blokes out on site. And when I was working with her and I talked to her, look, you know, a song can shift your state, a visual image can shift your state and your thinking. And she just immediately came to mind with this ACDC. She's a blonde, I'm looking at you, Narelle, now she's blonde like you. And she, she said, oh, this ACDC number. Well, that's all she needed. She gets that song in her head and out she goes. And that might be all that you need. Yeah, it's a song if that works, a chant, a mantra, something. Now, if you say to yourself, I'm a really lousy presenter, I'm nervous, I'm just not good at that. If you start trying to sell yourself, oh, I'm a really good presenter, you know the other voice in your head will go, yeah, right, you're so not. 
So choose language that works for you. Choose saying to yourself, I'm building my muscle. I'm well prepared. I'm giving this the best. The Nike, I'm just doing it. Think of something in your head that would work for you. Or the other thing that really works is a strong visual image that you look at it and you go, yeah. So think of a magic icon. I worked with another lady who was new to Australia and she, long story short, she took up to, to the lectern a couple of times an image, a photograph she had of her in her prior job. And she'd just look at it before she started. Visual clue straight away shifts the brain and she's there. So there's a few ideas for you to have smarter thinking about you and how you present to be more resourceful. Now the second one your power stance. Did you notice even the word I went, yes. <laughs> power stance, so much of our message is vis visually communicated. I see women come up like this, they stand like that, or their shoulders are drooped, their hands are like this, as opposed to, yeah, <laughs> you recognise that? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so think about your stance, particularly this one. I see people do this a lot. If I present it to you like that, what's happening? Yeah, potentially, yeah, exactly. So it's very weak. So practice getting your hands, anybody who does Pilates, anything like that, it's get yourself centred. And it's ideal if you can keep your weight on both feet about your shoulder width so you can stand confidently you can breathe well and get your power stance and I'd say practice it in a mirror practice it when I'm working with people in small groups I go up to them and go yeah come on give me your power stance and they go oh no no and then they get it there's that instant so go up close to somebody that, that, that is, is close to you and practice your power stance makes a difference